The manhunt for June 17th is now in progress. To date, you have captured 895 fugitives. Coming up, the clues that could lead to your next capture. Now, join the manhunt with John Walsh. You meet all kinds of people on the job. Some of them you like, some maybe not so much. Still, after spending long hours with your co-workers day after day, at least you think you know who you're dealing with. But that may not always be the case, as one woman discovered after a frightening close encounter. Sexual harassment in the workplace can take on many forms, but for a young woman named Christy, it couldn't get much more vulgar and what she says happened to her in the spring of 2004. Yes. You can see right directly to the toilet. Which I thought was really weird that it, you'd need some kind of freak to watch somebody go pee. Yes. Oh my God! Christy believed the peeping Tom was Jose Garcia, whom everyone called Joey. She immediately went to her boss at the fire extinguisher company where they both worked. Are you sure it was Joey you saw? He's always hanging around me, telling me problems with his wife. I know his eyes. I'll talk to him. He was irate with me, really mad. Said, I can't believe you thought it was me. You have to tell me. I don't want to talk about this right now, OK? Even though you don't have the proof? Christy says Garcia's obsession with her continued, even when she wasn't at work. Christy says while she was out of the office on Memorial Day 2004, Garcia remained at work, logged on to her office computer so he could check out her personal photos. Then just a few weeks later, Christy's house keys mysteriously disappeared while she was at work. September 24, 2004, Ledbetter, Kentucky. Christy was several months pregnant and had fallen asleep beside her young daughter. On this early autumn evening, her husband was out of town. Was it just coincidence, or did the masked stranger outside of her house know this ahead of time? This is definitely somebody that's very close to her, that has watched her for some time, and had uh, possibly been planning this attack for, for a number of months. opened my eyes because I felt somebody standing over me. I felt a shadow. The first time I opened my eyes, I felt, I thought I was totally hallucinating. He was all camouflaged. I just knew something was shocking the hell out of me. It overwhelms you. Like sticking your finger in a socket. I'm punching and struggling, and he was trying the whole entire time to get my arms behind my back to tie me up with the tie wraps. My daughter wakes up and runs to me. Mommy. Is when he backs away. I have TVs, money, whatever you want. Just take what you want. He refused to talk to me. I mean, no words whatsoever. <laughs> Just leave us alone. Just go. He grabbed the shotgun. He cocks it, and the shell hit the ground. My heart went off the hook. <laughs> I thought that was the end of it right there. For two hours, cops say Christie's attacker remained in her home. He allowed Christie to have a sip of water or change her daughter's diaper, but he never said a word. He refused to talk to me. I was willing to do anything he wanted me to do as long as my child was okay. The last question I asked was, do you want me? Me? I knew at this moment this was the time. This is when he wanted me. I can go through anything. I mean, if she woke up during that, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. In a 
Authorities say Christie would have to endure being raped over and over. He just positioned me wherever he wanted me to be. ran back and I grabbed my daughter. I saw some of the money still left on the counter. And to me, it was like a punch in the stomach. It was like he was paying for services rendered. So I grabbed my daughter and ran to the kitchen. Christy was soon giving a statement to Detective Alan Glendenning. Like for services rendered. His hand. When he was raping me, he took his glove off so he could touch me. He put this towel over my face so I couldn't see, but I peeked. His skin was dark, but not black. Hispanic? Yeah. His eyes. I remember his eyes. Tell me more about his eyes. I know who it is. Who do you think it is? He works with me. It hit me all of a sudden like a ton of bricks. Christy believed the man who raped her was Jose Joey Garcia. I always knew he was weird. I always knew he was a little strange. But I never, ever could have possibly have thought he would have do something like this. The next day, Detective Glenn Denning was sitting across from Garcia. Where were you September 25th? I was at home with my wife. Then you won't mind giving us a sample of your DNA. Come on, Joey. You're a good citizen. We can clear this all up right now. We've got somebody right next door. It's a simple smile. His bottom lip began quivering uncontrollably. Uh, that sent a message that this individual really didn't want to speak to us that he had something to hide. Come on, Joey. It took a court order for Garcia to submit his saliva for a DNA test. And about one month after Christie was raped, authorities got Garcia's DNA results back. They matched the DNA left at the crime scene. But by then, Garcia was long gone. However, Christie will never forget the pain she says Garcia inflicted on him. I can't go anywhere without looking over my shoulder. I'm always checking my rear view mirrors. I'm always checking all my windows in my house. Well, tonight, let's make Christy rest a little easier by bringing Garcia in. Jose Garcia's from Puerto Rico and often goes by Joey. He likes to drink protein shakes and likes to flirt. He speaks fluent English with a slight Spanish accent, and authorities believe he may be in the southeast. If you've seen Jose Garcia, Call our hotline at 1-800-CRIME-TV. Coming up. He was supposed to bring her closer to God. But this pastor didn't practice what he preached. He was uh, obsessed. Uh, when she was 13, he told her he loved her. When a man of the cloth becomes a man on the run, can you help cops collar him?